as a relationship challenge is provide a platform and an opportunity for the masculine and the feminine principles. Male How long will you be? Sit down at the table and discuss issues, solutions, current events, you know, things that come up that are causing a challenge within our relationships because we know that in order for a community to be rebuilt, a home to be rebuilt, a nation to be rebuilt, the masculine and the feminine has to work together in the way in which they were created to work. And so that's what we do here at the Relationship Challenge, and it's been three successful seasons. So I'm looking forward to um, the conversations that we will have going forward. But tonight we're going to talk about when the righteous rule, when the righteous rule, accusations, authority, and accountability. We're going to go deeper into the title, but before I do, we're going to introduce our special guest. We have, we already heard, this is co-hosted by Brother Sosan. He's on the ones and the twos. We also have um, the home panel, so I'll bring her in first, Sister Mayana Hasoferet, who has been with us. Since season one, Sister Mayana, welcome to the conversation. How are you this night? Yeah, stand by. I'll call after this dropped. I'll bring her back in as soon as she gets back in. Sister Mayana dropped. We also have uh, Sister Tifada who is here with us. She's sitting on the home panel. We have panelists who I'm going to bring in. He also helped facilitate this particular Sister show. Sister Mayana dropped. We also have having a little feedback. She helped to facilitate this particular show, and so we want to bring her in. How are you this evening, Sister Tafada? Hey, Shalom, sis. I'm good. good. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much. Just stay, stay right there. I'm going to definitely come back and do the opening round for those who may be new. Um, but for right now, I'm just introducing everybody. So I believe Brother Shahu's Sa- here. The elder Shahu, is he here? If I said your name incorrectly, feel free to let me know how to pronounce it so I don't mispronounce it the whole night. It's is it Elder Sha'al? Can you hear us? The line is open, 470. 470, 315. Yeah, <clears throat> I hear you. Welcome to the show. Peace, fam. And is that how I say your name, Sha'al? Uh-uh. Good morning. That's Brother uh, Beloved Dawid. Okay, that's Brother Beloved Dawid. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for that. Welcome to the show. And Elder Sha'al, are you on? I believe it's Elder. Yeah, that call dropped too. But I'm bringing it back in. As soon as they come in, I'll let you know. Be rocking and rolling, see, it's no problem because we're not new to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, did we get back, Sister Mayana? Not yet. So I'll, I'll bring her in as soon as she calls back in. All right, no problem. So, when when the other panelists come on, just feel free to um, let me know, and then uh, we can go from there. So, essentially, the topic of the show is when the righteous rule. We left off um, last season speaking about accountability of the leadership and how leadership and the choices of leadership affects the people. And so now we are bringing it back and having a discussion about the same subject but with a solution oriented. And so I open up the floor for you to give us a little bit more. Don't don't be shy, you know. Give us a little bit more about uh, who you are um, and your thoughts on the title, When the Righteous Rule. So I'll go to Beloved Dawid first for you to share your thoughts about who you are and your thoughts about when the righteous rule, what what should we expect when the righteous rule? All right, well, I'm I'm, below, I'm beloved, I'm uh, I'm just a servant of um, the most high, uh, most definitely come from uh, the same situation, what I feel that is, <clears throat> before we learn how to rule, before we learn how to rule, we must first embrace these very things that we're going through now, because just like every seed, it starts from the dirt, and then it bursts from the dirt, and then in due time, it begins to bear the fruit. I mean, and what I what I feel that any servant should bring to the table is a um, real good work ethic. Real good work ethic. The Most High is the one who gives us the the good seed. We're the one. We're just running out there to plant them. Per se. So I'm just a good servant. 
That's what I say. So even when I get to the kingdom, when the when, when the righteous shall rule, I'm still going to be a great servant. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you for your opening thoughts. Um, thank you for your opening sure. thoughts. We're definitely going to continue to build on those thoughts that you share, and that's kind of how we, we, we do here. It's a round table. Um, we build on thoughts. We address certain things, and everybody, I want to say this. I don't know if Sal said it, but we keep it clean and we keep it respectable. So when someone else is talking, we, we honor that, and we allow the person to speak, to finish, and respectably agree or disagree with one another, and that's how we build relationships here, especially on the air with this particular program. So I just wanted to say that if I didn't say it already. Um, I believe we have Brother Tazariak and Elder Shael on the line. So we're going to go to um, Elder Shael and then Brother Tazariak. Um, Elder Shael, are you back for free to introduce yourself and let us know your thoughts um, about when the righteous rule? Hey, Shalom Laka, peace unto all. The righteous got to be in the right standing with the creator, Almighty Yah, for number one in order to rule here on earth. And when we rule, we cannot rule with partiality, but we must rule according to the Torah, according to the standards of the Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So we have some things on the table. We have some humility. We have non-partiality on the table. And so we're going to definitely come back to these thoughts. We're just doing an intro right now, so we're going to come to... Thank you for that. We're going to come to Brother Tazariak. Welcome back to the platform. You've been here before, and so welcome back to the platform and to this particular conversation. Feel free to introduce yourself for those who don't know and chime in on your thoughts about when the righteous rule. Um, good evening, everybody. To everybody on the panel, Shalom. I'm uh, Captain Tazariak, Kavai, CDK. Um, I appreciate y'all having me on the show. I believe this is my second or possibly third time on the show. Um, it's always been pretty good uh, having conversations with y'all. Um, as far as the subject matter of the righteous, uh, Proverbs 29 and 2 says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So when the righteous rule, that state that we'll be in will be under the perfect order of the Most High. And being under the perfect order of the Most High is what every Israelite, not us, what every Israelite needs first and then, it trickles down to the entire earth because the end of that scripture mm-hmm. says, but when the wicked bear the rule, the people mourn. So we know what it is to mourn. Mm-hmm. We know what it is to be wicked. Um, when we get into that righteous order, then we can finally be at peace. So that's what we're supposed to be striving for. That's what we're supposed to be living for, for that right there. Thank you so much for that opening because that is exactly where the title comes from. If you missed that, the title is from, Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about. I want to see that because that's exactly what we're going to talk about tonight. Are, 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 are the righteous ruling in the return, can we qualify leadership as being in rulership of the spaces in which we occupy? And if they are, what are some of the safeguards that should be in place because, you know, the reason why we're having so much of these conversations is because, to a certain degree, the people are mourning. And so if the people are mourning, then we have to look at what's going on, right? And so for those who missed it, that was Proverbs 29. So we're going to continue this discussion. I understand that Sister Mayana is back. So, Sister Mayana, welcome back. Home panel, season one. Welcome to the conversation. Hey, shalom, shalom. Can I be heard? Loud and clear. Oh, that's what's up. Um, I was going to check the YouTube because I'm pretty sure we're up to season four. Didn't UTP come in on season three of TRC? You might be right. You I might think be right. Oh, so. I think we had two two um, seasons together before we started to share the platform with Under the Palm. That's what I was going to check you that out. You might be right. Oh, I'd have gave me the wrong answer. <laughs> 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 We're putting in a lot of work, sis. Yeah, wow, four seasons, everything. I had to take my little cat nap before I came on just now. I was like, wow, oh, i got to go to work. i got to go to work. But, for, but welcome to the conversation. Thank you for that um, that fact check behind the scenes right there, Sister Mayana. Yes, we are on season four. Um, what are your thoughts when the righteous rule, accusations, authority, and accountability? Your opening thoughts on it. The- I think it's a dope title. <laughs> we did a whole lot of midrash to get that title out. <laughs> 
I think that's a dope title, and uh, and we put a lot of thought into it as we put a lot of thought into many of the shows and the conversations that we have. Um, I think it's an important conversation because we often speak about what's wrong in the communities, and we point fingers, and um, we even de- we uh, devalue one another, and the conversation tends to devolve into a lot of, like I said, finger pointing and scoffing and mocking, and, um, you know, there's a, a lot of demoralization within the community. The community becomes discouraged when all you hear is the negative. And so I think that this is an extremely important conversation because this conversation is about getting to the solution part of it. The idea is not to stay in the um, the state of what we call the fallen state or the the curses and the like. The point is to ascend beyond that and get back to the point where the Most High would have us be. And so this conversation, or or the way we're hoping this conversation will go, is that we have leadership-minded people on the panel who are about those solutions, who are about the Most High's business. And so we no longer really have to, to live in this space where... We have the leadership failing the flock, but we have responsible, accountable, and this is the other part of it. The idea of authority is something that many, many people in positions of influence are familiar with and comfortable with, but the other side of that is the accountability. When we have accusations of pain, when we have accusations of abuse, when we have accusations of misuse, then we need to then completely turn the coin and say, well, where's the accountability? And prayerfully, what we are what we are presenting the people with in this conversation tonight is that accountability, that accountability and men and women who are willing to say, um, this is not okay, and we have solutions for you. We spoke about the proverb because the proverb was what, what – um, we birthed this conversation around the other uh, verses that you have heard us talk about. Of course, I'm addressing the listening audience now that you've heard us talk about time and time again is that there is um, a passage, I believe, in Jeremiah, and it's repeated elsewhere, where the leadership says, you know, peace, peace. It says, well, actually, it says something more along the lines of, you heal the daughters of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. And there's that, that idea of, the leadership behaving as if we're going in the right direction, soothing the people along the way, knowing full well that there is still much, there's danger ahead, full well that there is misuse ahead and all the pitfalls and, and the like on the path. And so we're going to stop that. If we know there's no peace, we're going to design policies. We're going to look at what's wrong and then craft solutions, and that's what this conversation is ideally going to be about, or at least the beginnings of that. All right, all right, all right. Thank you for that, Sister Mana. You've heard from the opening thoughts. So since we, we do have three points to touch here, and we have spent a lot of time going over the accusations, it shouldn't be hard. I'm just going to go around the panel, and we should hear the charges, right? Because if we're talking about accountability, one would have to say accountable to what? So because some may say, I didn't know that was going on in the community. I didn't know that was happening. This is when, when things come out the way they do, oftentimes leadership will be like, well, I didn't know that was happening. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not happening in my space. So to bring a level of awareness, can we, um, if we can, in an in a exercise of being honest as, and transparent, the things that are problematic so that we can get to the policies that can help these very things that are problematic. And so you don't have to have a, a, a huge, long laundry list, but in your estimation, in your experience, I'm going to go around the panel to hear if we can see, um, hear if we can see, right, some of the things that are the accusations um, of the leadership. What are the people accusing the leadership of um, in, in, in the shortcomings? I'm going to start with Brother Tazariak. From what you've heard, your experience, you're out in New York, you're out on the street. You're, what are some of the accusations that the people have towards the leadership? I appreciate you giving me the, <clears throat> the panel. The scripture you were referring to in Jeremiah is two of them, Jeremiah 6 and 14 and Jeremiah 8 and 11, when it speaks of uh, healing the daughter saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace, just, you know, for edification's sake. Um as far as accountability goes, I think um, leadership itself 
is usually not something that's um that a man or a woman can appoint themselves that way. If we you know if we go throughout the scriptures, uh no man was ever appointed a leader, the most high always appointed a leader. Whether it was Moses, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Yahweh Shai, Paul, whomever it was, it was always appointed by them. And you only knew that they were leaders if they spoke the word of the most high. Um, truly. You know, everybody knows scriptures, even Satan knows scriptures. So knowing scriptures is not enough if we see pastors, X, Y, Z. So the trap that I think we all fall in is, number one, we have people that call themselves leaders without meeting the qualifications or even having the standard. Um, And then you have people accepting people as leaders without truly vetting them because we have a – we have a love affair for wanting to be led, so to speak, meaning like we hear somebody come and they might speak powerful and they may resonate with us for the moment. So we automatically assimilate the title of he's a leader, she's a leader, you should do this, you should do that. When anyone that feels that they want to take that leadership role should really look at the responsibility that comes with that. Because everything that you do, everything that you say would now be scrutinized because of that title that you bear. Um, it's very easy, and I'm, I'm speaking from um, some from experience, some from myself being accused of things, because I've never called myself a leader at all. I don't really consider myself a leader. I'm just a servant of the Most High. If anybody considers me that, that's on them, and I still try to carry myself in that fashion. But from a personal experience, I myself have been accused of, Many things I've been accused of being an alcoholic, a deadbeat, a uh, child molester, woman beater. I'm only going off of what I've heard, um, not what I've actually listened to. And so um, when we first hear things about someone that we seem as a leader, it shouldn't necessarily be taken on face value. If you respect that individual that's being charged with that, you have to first see if it's actually legitimate. Because as we know, if we go through the scriptures, Many many actual leaders, like in the Bible, were accused of many things that just were not true, male and female. If you go to the story of Susanna, she was accused. So we got to be very careful of, number one, appointing a leader, taking on their leadership role, and really understand the responsibility of it. Because from what I observe, um, I think people take the Israelite custom or the Israelite culture as a joke. I don't know if they take it as serious as it should be. And in turn, what they're really doing is further, like the title of your show was When the Righteous Rule. And then I read Proverbs 29 and 2, um, when it said, when the righteous are authority, people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people mourn. What happens a lot of times is we go back to the mourning instead of the righteous authority because we get seduced by popularity, we get seduced by um, many different things, and we got to really, really, really be careful about um, this so-called leadership. Um, I kind of stay leery from people that just come onto the scene and then just want to take that responsibility. I myself actually shy away from the responsibility. It's not something that I necessarily want. And I try to, um, if I do speak on something, I try to have it be meaningful. Um, instead of frivolous all the time. So for me personally, I think both play a, both play a part, the people and the person that considers him or herself a leader. I don't think we're taking it as serious as we should. We should look at the men of old. Like Romans 15 and 4 says, whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. And when I look at Moses, when I look at Elijah, when I look at all of the prophets that we've had, they didn't always want that responsibility. So when I look at men today and I look at men that want that responsibility, I look at them a little shaky. And when I look at the people that gravitate to men and women, I should say, because it's not just men. When I look at the people that gravitate to that, I look at that shaky as well, because you really got to be careful. Like if we're going to serve the most high, we must serve him in spirit and in truth. And it's not about a man or a woman. You can't fall in love with that man. You can't fall in love with that woman. Your love got to be with the most high and his word and everything else got to straight to the side. And it's very hard to do. 
And so that's the struggle that I see, that I observe, and I, I don't want to be too long-winded to take away from anybody else. So that's my, that's how I look at it. Thank you for that. I um, bust out my pen and paper today so I can write all this down so that we can have a long list here. So um, thank you for that. That was the Brother Cesario. I, I, I'm, I'm going to come to Elder Shael next. Um, and I just wanted to recap that you said some very important things. Um, some of the accusations are no, not vetting, no criteria for yeah. leadership, mm-hmm. no qualifications, mm-hmm. uh, self-appointment. Right. Just go ahead and jump in the seat. And um, when when leadership is being accused, there there are no witnesses. They're not going according to Torah to actually um, to 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 vet these accusations. People are just right. running with them and believing them without really getting the witnesses. So that was some very right. excellent point. I'm going to come back around to them. Uh, we're going to go to Elder uh, Shael at this point so that he can give us his thoughts on some of the accusations. We're talking about leadership. We're talking about those who are in a, a ruling position or a, uh, you know, authority position and some of the accusations that we have heard from the people about those in these positions. Feel free to share your thoughts at this time. Okay, to that, Rabbi. Uh, can I be heard? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Captain Zazia, Zazia said uh, definitely um, hit on some very powerful points. Um, I'd like to pull the book of Exodus chapter 23, verse 1. And when you are leader or in leadership, um, proper, I mean, Exodus 23 and 1 say, Thou shalt not utter a false report. Okay, I want to start with that. So, no leader, um, I describe him to be a leader. He, he's self appointed. Um, let's use the self appointed leaders um, to put that hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. So, when you are a leader and you strive for righteousness, and you're teaching righteousness to the, our nation, there's a certain character you should have. And that character should be the character of the Most High. Love, patience, long-suffering uh, with your people. Um, you just can't be so quick to cut our brother or sister off. You just can't do what you want to do. You just can't be a, a renegade. You must have a certain character about yourself. You must display yourself with the attributes according to the Most High. And that is with, with a beating spirit of the Most High. And when we look at the condition of our people, look at the condition of the leaders, uh, that what's going on today, it's like we don't see the fear of the Most High no more. They, these men feel that they can do, not all but some, feel they can do what they want to do within the nation, then come back and just stand before the people and, and feel like they're untouchable. That's not true. That's not true. I won that teaching, preaching in Durham, North Carolina, listen, you come here playing games, you can get that whip. Do a raw chat 25. You can get those strikes put on you. That's it. So don't complain. Don't complain. You want to serve the most high? Serve the most high. But if you come playing games, we're going we gonna to execute you. Dead with that whip. So that's my example. All right. So I, I'm, thank you for that. That was Elder Shael. I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to leave that one. We're going to come back to it. But just to recap from what I got from what you said was lack of character, um, one of the accusations for leadership, lack of character, and um, lack of fear of the creator, uh, which are okay. also things that are, you know, like you said, people are doing as they will, whatever's right in their own eyes, and, you know, doing it in the name of the and these are some of the accusations um, towards leadership. So we're going to go down the line. We're going to come to Beloved Dawood at this time to uh, share some of the accusations towards leadership. Um, well, some, some, most, most time when we get it, um, which thank you for even opening the door to me on your platform. I appreciate that. Our esteemed to you who have to give all credit to the creator who definitely give us the inspiration. Um, a lot of times um, I hear that um, <clears throat> um, accusation that mostly put it at the same thing that we're talking about now is the lack of accountability. seems that the leadership wants to point the finger at the people and not take the fingers at them when in all actuality it is the people who should be pointing 
at the so-called one who stands in the front. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. See, that lack that lack of that lack of accountability hurts a lot of people. Hurts a lot of people. Um, when we do intake or uh, intake the scripture, it's not only by ear but also by sight. So usually when words are spoken, you know, people um puff them up so much you forget that nobody actually told you what to do when they actually gave you the instructions. You know what I'm saying? So they forget to <clears throat> what people forget to do is um well the leadership, what I'm saying, forget to do is actually apply those rules. Apply those rules and never want to be held accountable to the people. So once they fall, they say, Let's count it up as this. We all make mistakes. But see what we teaching the what we teaching the youth and what we teaching everybody watching? It's okay to make mistakes. We can't perfect our own culture. We can't perfect living our own lives. We can't become ourselves because it's impossible to do it in this in this captivity. Or it's impossible to do that. No one can do that. But we be, but we believe on a brother who came and did it perfectly. By which standard did he do it perfectly? See, we we badger this standard and we start to always stand on. Uh, Ah, oh, man, ah, oh, man, we need this, we need that. To do this and do this for him, but the only thing he said is have faith in this. This is the job. See, a lot of people don't feel that you this can reward you. This is a 24-7, this is a 24-7 job because the people are hurting everywhere. It's a different time in every different time zone. See, it's really about that work ethic. That's what I'm talking about, work ethic. Leadership is lazy. They get fat. They get fat. They done ate up off. They done ate from the ate off the people so long till they get fat. So you see the same. You see you see the same thing applied, and you're getting the same results. Exactly. It's time to screw some things up. Show the people that this thing can be done. If you show them that it can be done, then we provide an example. Once you spark that seed, they can embody the idea that the scriptures are. Uh, they can be applied in today's time. And it would do the people good. First, they have to see it do somebody good, though. See, we could talk these words all day, but they still shadow pictures until we apply it and become the bodies that represent that shadow. We have to move just like it. That's what it boils down to. Yeah, just to doing it. Stop talking it, doing it. All right, now. All right. That was uh, Beloved. Ooh, I have lack of accountability, lack of work ethic. And I, and I would venture to put lack of application. Lack of actually right. doing it says we're getting caught up in like uh, I believe it was Tazari, Brother Tazari who said the way they speak, you know, the fanciness of the words, the way we're wow, we're getting caught up in that arguing over this and that, and not actually taking the time to apply it. And, and the leadership, um, you know, they 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 they're showing the people how to follow them. So we're gonna go to um, thank you for that. We're gonna come back around. And again, if you're on the phone lines and you're listening, then I know it's been a while since we've been live. You know how to do it. Press 1 if you would like your voice to be heard. And we'll definitely come to the phone lines in a little bit. We're going to go to Sister Tifada for her to share her thoughts on some of the accusations. We're just going really, really quickly. Some of the accusations against leadership from the people. So in case somebody's in leadership and they've never heard it before, you know, or never knew that this stuff was going on, now they know. So Sister Tifada, what are some of the accusations that want to levy or you have heard against leadership. Shalom, family. Again, thank you for having me um, on our praises to Yohe Wape. What I will say is um, I want to thank everybody for coming on and speaking and um, just being able to build and edify. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I, there, every single person that is here I have specifically reached out to um, after watching your character for um, a period of time, and just a sincere level of respect that I have for each of you um, in your own respective ways. Um, thank you so much for coming on to build. Um, there's a couple things that have gone on, um, and I'm not, I'm not sure if every leader is aware. Um, just a few things. Um, you have um, leaders in the community, um, men who are leaders in the, or men who call themselves leaders in the community, that um, almost take um, scripture and apply it and uh, and use it for their own benefit. They use it for their own personal gain. They use it to 
um, to, oh, you said don't cuss. I'm going to do good today. Um, they use it to um, to get women. They use it to justify how women are being treated. Um, they use it to uh, threaten a woman um, if they were to ever share whatever information um, that they have and say that it's not for them to go share it with anybody else because you're supposed to just keep it in your own home. And so that keeps a woman in bondage and making her feel like she cannot share that with the rest of, of anybody else. And so what happens is um, there can be no application of accountability in certain areas because the majority of the women feel like they don't even have a right to speak and are so scared to even speak not only to their husbands um, or to people that have called themselves husbands based on what they have interpreted the scripture as, but also to go to their elders if they have them or go to any outside counsel as well, um, just out of fear of being ostracized, um, fear of being verbally abused, fear of being mentally abused, and even some from what I hear, um, the fear of being physically abused. And so that, that is what's going on in the community. Uh, physical abuse. Um, men uh, that tell other um, women that they are not allowed to learn anything from outside of their home because they use scripture even on that too. Because, but, but what will happen is, is they'll say you can go to the university and you can go to school and learn, but you can't learn anything from anyone else other than me, even if that woman does not agree with them. And so I would say that would be, um, mental bondage to to not even address that um what else goes on in the community i I don't even have a list i should have had a list prepared um there are men who and leaders in the community um for a young lady reached out to me and had to separate from her child because the man said that the scripture said that a a woman cannot bring a, a child that she had before him into uh, their marriage if she wanted to be in the kingdom. There are men who use scriptures that say that if you're a single woman, then you uh, you and your child need to, your child is a bastard, they won't make. So again, they just use scriptures however they want to, and then they apply it, and then they have elders over them, and then no one says anything, so it's just like it's the right thing. So I don't know if, you know, if the... if it's accountability, because Ariok said something that was very profound. He said... When there are people who call themselves leaders, and then there are people who will use their words, and you don't verify or validate if that person is truly a leader. And so you just have a desire to want to be under someone so much that you just go with that. And I must say that I fell victim to that myself. So I fell victim to not um, validating someone who considered themselves to be a leader because I wanted to be um, from what I was told, I wanted to be in my respective place as a woman, and I wanted to make sure that I had a covering, and I wanted to make sure that I was doing things because ultimately at that time I just wanted to do whatever the right thing was. And so at that time I thought, okay, well, this is the right thing, and so that's what I'm going to do. And so, I, you know, accountability. I can't say, you know, hey, it was completely that person's fault for um, for using Scripture uh, that wasn't um, appropriate in our relationships and how they how we got out built our relationship but i will say that maybe i should have been a little bit more learned but then again i come to find out it's, it's more than just me so is that person doing it just to me was that my error or is the person's error and that's their character so i think it has a lot to do with character and accountability and application um and resolve examples how how who's going to be the example on how to get these things Done. When they come up in the future, what advice can, can you gentlemen, you leaders on the phone give and that you apply already and what do they need to do? And why is it that everybody, um, do you think it's possible or do you think it's something that will just continue? And so I yield the floor. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. We are definitely going to get to the other side of all of those questions that you just asked. But thank you so much, Sister Tafada, for sharing. Um, what I got from you was using or misusing the scripture for personal gain. And that's something I just have to add that has been going on, even within the text. You know what I mean? That is something that is, uh, we see it in Eli's son, using their position for personal gain, exploiting women. This is something that has been ongoing. But um, we also see the exploitation, the silences of voices, 
uh, marginalization of people, um, namely women and, and in, in many cases children. And then we see abuses. These are some of the allegations. So let's keep our ears open for these allegations because we are going to come around shortly to some of the uh, things that we can do to hold these people accountable. And even if we can hold ourselves as the leaders accountable as well as the people accountable. Um, so we're going to go to Sister Mayana for her thoughts on some of the accusations. I know the list is long here, Mayana. It's a long list right here. The list is long of some of the accusations. But if we missed any, if we missed any, feel free to share. Is Sister Mayana on the line? Yeah, she's still on the line. I'll try to reach out on the background. Mr. Mayana, are you on the line? I'm going to reach out to her in the background. All right, no problem. While we're trying to get Sister Mayana, I'm going to try to let her get in before we go to the next round. In the meanwhile, if you're just tuning in and you're wondering what in the world we're talking about, when the righteous rule, accusations, authority, and accountability, let me just read back this long list that I got here. I have to flip the page of some of the things that have come up um, and why people – and keep in mind, this is why people uh, say they're no longer Hebrews. This is why – these are the things why people – say they used to lead the community. This is some of the reasons why people say they're just going to go back into the world. These are the things, these accusations, these, some being false, some being true, some need to be examined further, but these are the things that come up on a continuum, especially in the realm of uh, social media and YouTube, where at any point in time someone can find somebody calling foul about what has been done to them and no justice has been served. No, There's no resolve on the case. The person, the family, the communities are broken up behind transgressions on wrongdoings where, keep in mind, the Torah has um, remedies for transgressions and wrongdoings. But because we are in a space where some of these things are not applicable um, to where we are, then the transgressions and wrongdoings are, are you know, left to grow and to fester, um, and people are left feeling like there's no justice being served. And so we have to keep these things in mind while we are um, having this conversation. So I'm just going to recap. Okay, Sister Mayana, are you back? Would you like to share your thoughts? Would you like me to recap and then you share your thoughts on uh, the accusations before we go over to authority, authority, which we touched on a little bit, but we can touch on it again before we go to some of these solutions. Well, it sounds like you were already um, queued up to go down the list. I have only uh, three or four things that I briefly thought I would add to it. It was very tempting to just kind of build on what was said because everyone was so thorough and thoughtful in what they were bringing out. But I think that for the sake of the audience, it would be great to kind of refresh everyone, and I will just tack on uh, my final thoughts. All right now, all right now, we're going to go down this list. We have no vetting. No criteria for leadership, no qualification. You're two seconds in the truth. Wait, I'm, not, I'm gonna try not to add my little points. Be quiet. <laughs> let, 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 hold on, let me do it. Let me go from the top. No vetting, no criteria, no qualifications to be a leader. No witnesses when accusations come forward. Self-appointment, uh, lacking character, lacking fear of the Creator, lacking accountability, um, lacking worth ethic and application of the word. Using scripts for personal gain, uh, using it to get women using it to exploit women, silencing the voices, uh, marginalizing, you know, women and children, abusing physically, emotionally, and um, scripturally. So now, there you go, Sister Mayanna. You have any more? There's more? Right, there's let me, let me hear it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, first I want to say hallelujah that we're able to reflect honestly about where we are and not pridefully. We're not trying to protect what should not be protected, that we understand that there are these flaws that we're able to recognize that we do have that kind of integrity and distance. So hallelujah or praise to the Holy One of creation. Um, But I would add that whereas we spoke about vetting the leadership, which is an essential part of healing and and moving past some of these um, terrible behaviors we have cultivated, we also aren't vetting the information. 
um, it was touched on briefly when it was said that we are we are swallowing wholesale what the leaders are pushing out simply because we feel the need to be stimulated. We want to be underneath someone, and so we are we are pushing the person in the stead of the Most High, which is my second uh, kind of sub critique um, under this idea. But we're not vetting the information because we are so um, wedded to our admiration of the person. And so I would critique that in terms of um, one of the ways that we are going terribly wrong. The other thing is that we are recycling information, so I suppose that's under this other idea, is that even the leaders that start to sound very proficient in spaces, they're simply recycling bad information. And they aren't vet- they are not vetting the information either because their predecessors may have said something and it was successful with the people, it gets recycled. And the people, because it's not because it's correct, but because it's common, it, it becomes part of the canon. And uh, that's obviously extremely problematic. So there's this recycling issue that is, is a problem. And then there's also that we're not being aware of our representation, of our presentation and performance in the street, just, just um, our personal carriage, the way we are um, being, because again, you and I have spoken numerous times that our very lives are our, our testimony. The Torah is practical. It's what we do. It's great to study it. It's great to dissect it. It's great to unpack it. But the point is, it's going to be in our presentation, in the way we conduct ourselves, in the way that we dress, in the way that we speak, in the way that we ultimately live this uh, this truth because the purpose is to to live in accordance to the most high and to be a testimony to others to bring them back to him to remember that these are the most highest people all these com- these conversations and labels and the like um about who you're the leader of or you know or over whatever number of population the fact is these are all the people of the most high and so when we find ourselves constantly in in discussions, debates, and the like with other people and outsiders, it's usually because they're on the outside looking at us, and we're not aware of our presentation. We're not aware of our performances. We make excuses for our vulgarities. We make excuses for our shortcomings, and we don't to put in, I think, something touching on the idea of the work and the effort, putting in the work, doing what we must do, in, in, uh, in, in, instead in being in see, seeking instead all of the accoutrements and the bells and the whistles and those things that bring us glory or, or personal vanities and the like. So um, my third um, contribution is representation, presentation, and performance. And finally, that... Um, we have a lot of, I think, you, although you're being in jest, the idea is, yes, you have two or three minutes into the truth or someone told you that simply by virtue of your penis, you are qualified to speak because as a man you are destined to do whatever and your 14 minutes into the truth is sufficient so long as you know Deuteronomy 28 and uh, can point to your genitals. You can therefore uh, do practically whatever. And we aren't turning to the elders who have made the mistakes that we made. And, and the reason the elders are on my mind is that, um, well, first of all, Iman Ami called me while, I was on the, while we were on the line. So, of course, uh, shout out to Iman Ami. But just yesterday I was surrounded by half a dozen elders who, elder women, the Imahot, who have been in the truth for 50 years. I mean, there's lived experience in the culture 50 years. Meanwhile, we are constantly getting reports of women abandoning the entire pursuit of righteousness within weeks or months or the moment the man has disappointed them. Uh, meanwhile, there are women who have raised their children in the truth, have, have midwived for each other, has uh, circumcised our sons and midwived for our daughters. And so this uh, not re- not respecting, not not even cultivating this this um, respect for elders, respect for longevity, respect for the continuity of the nation. There's all this I talk about nation building, where there's already bricks in place. You know, where every generation thinks they're doing something new, and that's that's bad. That's wrong-headed. 
there's no way to build if every time we, we go back to the drawing board as if we haven't laid any foundations anywhere. And we're, we're not as, um, we, we're not connecting the way we should. We have many, and I'll stop here, but uh, just to make it aware that we do have some people that have made efforts to create documentaries, to sit with the elders, to, to figure out how far these breadcrumbs go back so that we aren't reinventing the wheel all of the time. But because we have so many people excited in the moment, we're always trying to recreate the new thing. And, you know, we're someone else is always the best to ever do it, and we're not going back to our elders, not to find their wisdom and not to find their mistakes. That leads, me, that leads me to a point that I wasn't going to make. But we do have, to some degree, a little bit of ancestor worship. And I, I, I want to put that there. We have a little bit of this ancestor worship where in our attempts to parse through the the text that we are hesitant or afraid to say our ancestors made errors. Some of these things were wrong. And so because we're trying to return, we're so anxious to return, we're swallowing everything whole. And again, that goes back, I guess, to my first point of not really vetting the text and vetting information in a responsible way. So with that, I'll yield. Woo-hoo. Okay, woo. I mean, I'm going to try to – we got a lot of people on the panel. Thank you for that. That was a pleasure, <laughs> Sister Bayana. I'm going to try to, I'm gonna try to stay clear and just, and just keep going forward. But thank you for that. If you just tuned in, we're having a discussion. We have a full panel, full house tonight. This is the season return of Debate Talk for You, the Relationship Challenge, and so many more um, – Awesome shows coming for you. So we have When the Righteous Rule, Accusations, Authority, and Accountability. You already spoke about accusations. There are a lot of them. Very, very valid point. I would have to agree with Sister Minor. Thanks, everybody, for being just so transparent and honest and not coming on here and be like, well, you ain't got no problem. I mean, show up. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing. <laughs> We're actually acknowledging, you know, these are some of the things that are being said some valid, some not so valid, and we need to take a look at this. So we're going to go over now to authority, which is the next A, if you didn't check it, it's AAA, right, emergency? It's the next <laughs> A in this conversation, which is authority. And so since we're think, talking about leadership, how far should this authority go? The person is in the seat, whether they put themselves there, the people are listening to them. For the people, as well as the leadership, how far does this authority go? Because in some spaces, the authority goes clear into your house, clear into the color of your box, you know what I'm saying? And for some people, it goes into your marriage. It goes into, it goes into all these spaces that the Torah doesn't necessarily say that they should go. But because they're the leader, the moray, the chief, the elder, whomever, the thought is that I can um, say these things to you and the people are in this fearful position that I have to accept what is being said because, of course, you know, follow the leader. So I'm going to go to, let me see here, I'm going to go to Elder, no, I'm going to go to Beloved Dawood and then Elder Sha'el and then Tazariat and then Sister Tafara and Sister Mayana. How far should this leadership go? You know, what is, what, was it just teaching the word, showing up on Shabbat? How far should this, this authority go of the leaders, quote, unquote? <clears throat> well, I, personally, the lead, I'm just a brother. That's it. That's far as it goes. Now, my example should be a good example. I should be always my brother's keeper. That's as far as it goes. Always lift my brother up. Always be there for my brother when he don't know. Tell him what he should know. That's as far as it goes. As far as leadership, to gather a lot of people or people begin to follow them broad is the way to destruction. It's only the narrow way. And many and it ain't many passive buyers on that on that road. So if there if there are many people following man, they can't be following the set apart one. I'm just your brother. We here to just be a light. Guide your brother to the doorway that he's supposed to be anyway. Because he's going to have to get his own family out of here. He's going to have to get his own children out of here. He's going to have to get everybody that he knows out of here, too, because that's the accountability that a man must have. See, the reflection of a man ain't, ain't that mirror when he go look in the mirror every morning. The reflection is when he turn around and see the, see the people, see his kids, see his wife. That's the reflection. Are they in order? 
Well, that's, that's, that, that should um, answer your question. It said, the most I see is, uh, it says in the scriptures, uh, let a man, um, if a man don't have his own house in order, then he, can't, he cannot have a position in the congregation of your hood. He can't. So if his own house is a mess, that's far as it goes. Well, well. I'm just your brother. I'm just your brother. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just here to be a good example. I'm just here to be a light. I'll speak to you. Well, 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 well. Um, thank you for that, brother, that beloved. That um, we gonna go to Elder. Well, um, yeah, we are gonna go to Elder Shael. Um, with your thoughts? How far does it go? How far should authority, the authority of the leadership, go? You know, to what are the limits? Um, if they okay. are any. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I want to um, read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verses uh, 16 through 17. And it say, And I charge you judges at the time, saying, Hear the cause between your brother, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with, that is with him. And let me also pull Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 19. Okay, book of Deuteronomy Romans, chapter 16 and verse 19. It say, let me start at verse 18. Yeah, I read verse 18 through 19. Judges, judges and officers, thou shalt make thee in all thy gates, which Yohewahi, that Elohim giveth thee throughout thy tribes, thou shalt judge the people with just judgment. 19. Thou shalt not risk judgment, rest judgment, thou shalt not respect the person, neither take a gift. For a gift do blind the eyes of the wise, and pervert the words of the righteous. And these are some of the things that is going on within B'nai Israel. That when a brother, a leader, mess up, and it become known publicly to the nation of Israel, and this brother cannot humble himself and confess his fault before the nation of Israel, that's when all leaders should come together and say, listen, this particular brother here do not need to be standing or teaching before the nation of Israel because his what sin has found him out. It has been made public before the nation. And this is something that I don't understand, what I see in the nation of Israel. Our brother commit foolishness. He back on YouTube teaching the game. Everybody just saying, huh. Can we can we just all get along? No, this man this man don't need to be teaching nothing. Zip zero. That's my thoughts. I know I said well well already, but well well. <laughs> <laughs> we up to we up to authority. Um, uh, and and yeah. how far does it go? How much jurisdiction do does the people have? Do others leave us have to hold? the person accountable, do they have any at all, you know, how far, again, I, I'm asking this question because leadership, and we heard this before, takes the position where they put their hands into people's homes, into people's households, making judgments of wrong judgments and causing, you know, family splits and divorces and, uh, you know, oppression and then be like, oops, you, you know, I just gave you counsel. You ain't had to listen to me. You know what I'm saying? And the people are like, well, I thought you were leading. You know what I mean? And it, it's causing a lot of, there's a lot of fallout. Let me just say that. And so we've heard um, so far some very, very interesting points. So we're going to come to Brother Tazari. How far does this go? Uh, leadership, the scripture the brother brought on Deuteronomy 16 was perfect. We got to think about the individual that brought that. That was Moses. So leadership is, I think, extremely important. And it's extremely important not just for judgment, um, but just for instilling the law, instilling the mercy, instilling faith, um, X, Y, Z. The other brother that said um, about um, we make offenses and no one charges them for it. I think that's the number one problem within authority. I don't necessarily have a problem with um, someone being an authority, but there is levels to that authority. No one should run anyone's house. Of course, you can give counsel to a woman, you can give counsel to a man on what they should do, but the ultimate decision belongs to the man in charge of that house or the woman in charge of that house. 
So there is that limitation. I ain't seen nowhere in the scriptures where a leader has charge over anyone's house at all. Um, so no leader should be doing that. Um, as far as um, if I could touch again on the accountability, the problem that we have with that same authority is that when a charge comes against him, and that's an excellent point the brother brought out, like the charge that come against the brother, and then he right back on YouTube, and he's getting the same love he got before. We're teaching a dangerous lesson to the nation of Israel when we do that. What we're teaching is that we're no different than the Christian church. We're no different than Kemet. We're no different than Islam. We're no different than drug dealers. We're no different than any average person on the street. There is no accountability that we're holding these leaders to. I myself, again, I can only speak from my personal experience. I remember when, um, I think it was 2015, um, a woman had levied heavy charges against me. I went to work. Like, I'm, I'm a person that I really don't care what people say about me. I can, like, I believe in the Most High so much that if it's, um, if I'm not doing anything wrong, I don't really, the problem that, this, this is a problem that I have. I don't feel the need to defend a lie. I'll defend the truth all day. So the word of the Most High, I'll defend that all day. But it's very hard for me to get up energy to really defend a lie. And I remember three years ago, there was heavy charges laid against me. I went to work. I didn't care. And my school, the school that I'm in, I should be K, um, had me come, had me drive down to Philly to, you know, deny the charges. And I brought my uh, uh, wives on the show with me, um, you know, and they stood with me. And then when I did my show, that that was a Monday. And then when I did my show that following Thursday, I again addressed the charges and said that they wasn't true, X, Y, Z. And then that taught me a great lesson. The lesson that that taught me was that even if it's a lie, because people look at you or because people can hear you, because you put yourself out there as a voice, you have to make sure that you do answer those charges. Because if you don't answer those charges, then you're leaving it up to the people to make their own decision instead of you saying, hey, I didn't do this. These charges are false. So then if I continue to speak, I've answered the charges. They've been proven not to be true. And so then I can go forward. So I accredit that to the organization that I'm in because they require a certain level of accountability. I don't really see that anywhere else. So I don't really look at a lot of people. There's some people that I look at that I would say have authority, but if you're not holding anybody accountable, then it's just a paper title. It's not a, um, a legit title because if it's a legit title, you don't just hold that title when you want to go live or when you want to teach on the street, you hold it in all facets. Like you are, if you put your voice out there, you're literally saying, I want to take on the responsibility of people's lives because we're sheep. Like the scriptures say all the time, Isaiah 1 and 3 say, the ox knoweth his owner, the ass his master's crib. Now I could say the word ass, but that's Isaiah 1 and 3. So I didn't cuss or use foul language. I read the scripture. That's a joke, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, but it is in scripture, just so I could be on the safe side. Um, we're sheep. And the reason why we're sheep is because we're easily led astray. And the problem that we have is that when the problem happens, we want to automatically just blame the authority. We cannot just blame the authority and take the accountability from ourselves as well. It's, it goes hand in hand. You can't have one. You can't have a leader unless somebody put him there. You can't be listened to unless somebody is listening. So, we have to stop being so naive. When I'm saying we, I'm talking about all of us as a people. We have to stop being so naive because somebody knows scripture such and such or somebody discovered some so-called new artifact or, or some new language or anything, and then now they're the ones to be followed. And for sure, if there's a charge levied against them and they don't answer that charge or they try to sweep that charge under the rug, we have to really get rid of them. Like, we don't realize the power that we have. The power that we have is to appoint and destroy. That's the power that we have. But the problem is when we give our affiliation to somebody and you give so much love to that individual and then that individual does something wrong, your love for that person then clouds your judgment. That's why the scripture 
that the brother pulled in Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, was so heavy because you can't rest the judgment. You can't be a respecter of persons. So let's say if when those charges came out about me, if they were true, I should not be allowed to speak at all. I say this all the time. If I did one of those things that was charged against me, I should not be allowed to teach. I should not be allowed to speak without owning up to the responsibility and then coming to the people and being accepted. Like that's the responsibility that number one, the leader has to have and we have to hold the people to. So authority only comes, first of all, the authority comes from the most high. And when you recognize that authority comes from there, you look at the man that claims to have that authority. And if he ain't doing what the most high said, or she ain't doing what the most high said, then you have to take your love away, take your respect of persons away and make the righteous decision. And that's where we fail at. So for me, authority, the failure in authority or the role of authority ain't just on the person that we look at as the authority. It's also on the people that have appointed them the authority as well. So that's all I got. Good stuff. <laughs> I hope y'all are taking notes because this is excellent stuff. It's word to the wise, you know what I'm saying? A word is enough for the wise that what what is being said here is that the people also have a role, and I often say this and, you know, I don't, you know, people get upset, but the people are contributing. We, the people, are contributing to why and how the so-called leaders are acting. Because as we're saying, if someone has done something and we and we do it in our communities, we do it in our private lives, we see a lot of this abuse and exploitation taking place at the home or in the community or in the church or the Knesset, and then we pretend, you know, everybody's like, <gasps> and then it's hush-hush, and then it's never addressed, and the person is around, and it's kiki kaka, back to normal. That therein lies the problem. You, you see what I'm saying? Because as, as the scriptures are coming out, the Most High gave His laws and judgments already. It's for the people to actually apply them. It's for the people to take heed to them. But if we don't, and we turn a blind eye when, and then we say, well, where's the justice? The people refuse to do that which is just, right? So thank you so much. It's good information. I hope you guys are writing it down. We're going to come to Sister Tafara and then Sister Mayana and then check on Brother Sal to see whether or not the callers are warming up as yet and then whether or not they have something to say before we – and we have been kind of playing hopscotch between authority and accountability, but then we're going to focus directly on accountability in a little bit. So Sister Tafara, would you like to add how far does this authority go um, into the homes? How can it affect people? How has it affected people's lives? when you actually listen to the leadership, assuming that they are in authority, and then when it comes time for accountability, you know, it's all on you, it's all on the individual. What are your thoughts? Um, thank you so much, um, Sister Mona. Um, when I think of um, authority, um, I wanted to look up the definition. And so when I did so, uh, the synonym came up, and it was jurisdiction. And so jurisdiction, the definition is the extent of the power to make a, a legal decision and judgment, a system of law courts adjudicator, the official power to make legal decisions and judgments. And so when you even think about uh, jurisdiction and you think about court, um, what gives a person jurisdiction um, over a matter? And so what I found is it says the authority, jurisdiction is the authority given by law to a court to try cases and rule on legal matters within a particular geographic area and or certain types of legal cases, and it's vital to determine before a lawsuit is filed before a court that has jurisdiction. And so when I think of authority, those things came to mind as far as a legal system being that tour would be the law that we all say that we live and, and govern our lives by. And so when somebody says that they have authority and how far does it go, and then you have people that are given instruction and, and, and pretty much impeding what is perceived as proper judgment on people in their everyday lives, you're saying, like Cesario said, listen, I'm, I'm willing to be held accountable because I'm now opening my mouth. And what's missing is the beloved that we said that, the people that are supposed to <laughs> hold those people or say something are the people that are not leading to say, hey, this is what happened and there needs to be a charge bar for, but nothing is happening when that happens. And so then you're right. 
You have people like myself, let me use me as an example, that say, you know what, I don't even want to be a part of the entire community. I don't know if I want to do it, and it's because if this, I was in Christianity for 30, 30 years. So I know what it looks like for a pastor to sleep with a woman in his office, and then it gets swept under the rug, and then he's preaching next week, hollering on the pulpit. I seen that. My dad was a pastor. I know it very well. And so now when I see it now, what is considered to be called a truth, it's disgusting. It's disgusting, and it's heartbreaking. And it is, um, it, it, the only thing I can just really say is it's heartbreaking. And I'm just going to only use myself for an example because that's that's my truth. Um, and so no matter what you see or or what people say, there's, what do you do? You know, uh, um, you can, uh, people can plead out and you can say, hey, help me. And you can say, hey, this is a charge that I have against, you know, John Doe. But if nobody holds John Doe accountable based on the jurisdiction, because, again, we're all saying that we uphold the same law, and then next week John Doe sits out a, a week in, or a month and don't make no YouTube videos, and now they're back talking about Shalom, family peace, and Shalom. Like, what is this? What, what, are, we, what are we doing? Like, nobody going to say nothing? And so then I'm thinking, well, maybe, maybe it wasn't done properly. Let me, let me go publicly and then say, hey, this is a charge. I would like to go before some elders and have my case heard because this is what happened. These are the charges that I have. Can somebody step up to the plate and say, can you help me judge? To be honest with you, that's how I first reached out to Beloved because that was what I was going to ask him. Would he be a judge? I reached out to Elder Child for the same exact reason because I was thinking to myself, somebody, I need somebody to hear this matter, and if I'm wrong, hey, somebody tell me I'm wrong, but if something is wrong on the other end and I have been wrong, I need for somebody to say something. I was pleading out, like, what do I do? And what I found is I never got an opportunity to speak to uh, beloved about it, so he he didn't. We didn't get a con- chance to even meet on it, so he didn't even know I was reaching out to him. But after a certain amount of time, I just said, you know what? I got tired of hearing it. You need to get over it. That's what I was told. You need to just get over it. You need to just not worry about it. I got tired of phone calls after the fact because what I'm finding that what leaders do, and it's not just with me, is then they go behind the woman and then they discredit her and they say, oh, well, she's just crazy. Or, or they'll remove some screenshots or make up their own posts or they'll make up partial videos or make up whatever pictures and they'll say, see, this is what happened. But they don't ever give the person, the person that is accusing them an opportunity to present the information. Again, we're talking about law, right? We're talking about jurisdiction. We're talking about authority. We're talking about being held accountable. And so now you have people who other people have called me leaders because I've never in life called myself to be one, ever in life. I'm not even sure. I don't even know how I got here. I don't even want to be nothing. I don't want to be. But what I'm realizing is that the moment that I get quiet, I have other women reaching out to me because in their mind, sis, you're my only voice because I can't reach out. I can't say the things that you can say. So then now I feel held responsible because if I don't speak out on behalf of these women, then who do they have? So what I'm saying is, is that when I think of authority, that's a power right to give order. So then when you're talking about vetting as the men that are on the phone, you leaders, what I'm asking is tell us how do we vet people? What are we looking for in leaders? What are we what are we looking for? Because you're right, there is no criteria. We don't apparently we don't know what those those things are. Um, you know, and then how far does it go until somebody has to be answer the call or answer the plea? Or do we just consider this to be white on black crime and we just sweep it under the rug because that's just another number? Because that's most certainly how it feels. That's how it affects lives. Every one of you that know me know that I'm a very, um, I have a very strong character. But when I tell you that injustice can break a person down, it will make you not want to be a part of a complete whole system. You're looking at a product of one because that's what you're saying. And so that's all that I really have to say. I just wanted to bring those few points out and just say that if you have a woman that is, for instance, that is reaching out and saying, 
not even pointing the finger saying, hey, this person did this, this person did this. If you have a woman saying, hey, can I get some elders that can judge this matter? Let me present my information. All I'm saying is this. If I've done anything wrong, because if, if you really are honest and you know you've not done anything wrong, I'll say what I said two months ago. Charging me now here with. And if you're a real leader, do you be able to say that? And I yield the floor. All right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you for that. That was a poison sister to Fada. We are this conversation getting deep, y'all. We having a conversation about accusations, authority and accountability when the right to rule. Um, we are on the second portion of this. We're gonna go on another round. We're gonna check on the callers after I check on Sister Mayana to hear her thoughts. If she has anything else to add as it relates to how far does this authority go? Um, and it and it's 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 it's, it's, it's I would just say this that so after years and years of doing this, what we do, which is bringing, uh, not necessarily judging the matter, but bringing light to and giving an opportunity for those who have been wronged or, or, or need to cry out to have a space to do so, even many times cry out on their behalf. This is what uh, Brother Sal, the platform, has allowed us to do here at Debate Talk for you. Um, and the reality is that, as Sister Tafari is saying, how do you vet these? Because the people are, the lead, so-called leaders, many of them are exploiting the hurts and the pains of the people who are already coming their way, right? And so at this point, you know, there's a lot of things that are able to slip through the cracks. And then when the offense happens, it's kind of like trying to work in reverse, which makes it very difficult because the person was never accountable to anyone to begin with. Sometimes we have a lot of lone wolves. We have a lot of people out there who say they may respect others, but when you come to check them, they're not going to be responsive because they're not within a framework that they fear being, ex you know, YouTube, you just strike it up and do what you do. And so this is the kind of environment that we um, are in presently to make it kind of a wild, wild west. But I asked about authority, and I'm going to come to Sister Miana because there are certain camps, there are certain connections who will go directly into someone, say, marriage, and say to them, divorce that person if you want to be here. Because then these are the reports that are coming out. So these are, you know, this is what you must do. They, they tinkle with people's personal homes and their lives and their relationships and their children and cause much pain and anguish, and then there, there, there's no accountability. There's no resolve. If you go back to them, they say, I didn't tell you to do that, or you didn't have to listen to me. You understand? So this, this causes more pain and more anguish and more hurt in the community. And so we have to just at least, if anything, aware that this is actually happening. And it's not just tail-bearing. These are the things that are happening, and we need to be on our P's and Q's and, and on the lookout for them so that we can give right counsel when we hear it. But I'm going to go to Sister Mayana um, before we go to the phone line. Sister Mayana. So much really good information was already presented. What I will do is um, take us to early Shlomo. Now I always like early Shlomo and early Dawid as they, <laughs> right before they begin to get corrupted with uh, other successes. But what we find is in First Kings 3 and 9, we find Shlomo saying to the Creator, your servant is here among the people you have chosen a people too numerous to count or number. Mm -hmm. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people and to discern between good and evil. For who mm -hmm. is able to govern this great people of yours? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I thought that it was important to, to read this is that we see who the principal um, entity is here. Shlomo is saying, I am your servant. Your pay, while pay is taking center stage. The people, they are yours also. I am yours, mm -hmm. the people are yours. And it's that perspective. There's humility mm -hmm. there, there's perspective there. Mm -hmm. What happens with leadership, when mm -hmm. you ask, what is the limit of authority? The limit is the laws are already on the books. There's nothing for leadership to create. What the job of man or, or whomever their job is to maintain. Because even Shlomo is saying, who can govern these people of yours? And what we find is there's so much um, arguing about uh, those are my people, that's my corner, you can't do this, and, 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 oh, you're trying to steal my people. 
and we critique the churches for this very thing. We we feel like right now the churches are going through paranoia and panic because the people are leaving the coffers. Not that they're leaving the pews, but they're abandoning the, the collection plates. The the churches in fear of the exodus of their funds. And these camp congregations and, and Knesset have a similar fear. We can't we don't want to share spaces. We don't want to share the people. These are my people. We have our colors. We have our insignias. We have our leaders, and these people belong to us. We even have some Knesset that would go so far as to say that if you don't, um, if you if you belong to one Knesset, you can't even visit another. Or if you don't belong to my Knesset, you can't be friends with me on social media. I mean, I mean we're, we're drawing arbitrary lines and borders, and we're creating limitations where the Most High hasn't put them. This idea of, oh, we have these different minds. If we're all talking about what the Most High has already put on wax, it's much easier to come to a space. What we hear Sister Safara lamenting is the fact that we don't have a, a, a what do we call it, a big dean, a, a, a place, a judgment seat, a, a, a judging area. We don't have a house of judgment. And that is because we don't have leadership that is willing to share power, <laughs> willing to share anything, because they are hoarding power and forgetting that they don't have, even though we hear a lot of, I'm a servant, I'm a servant, but Shlomo was very, very specific. I'm your servant. These are your people. So we see later when the Chronicles are recording his petition, they say that he petitioned for wisdom, but we find in Kings that he petitioned for understanding. He needed to understand. He's not creating anything. He's maintaining the will and the purpose of the Most High. When we go um, into the Proverbs, it's Proverbs 22, I want to say, because it's the same Proverbs. Yes, it is Proverbs 22, the very first um, verse in Proverbs 22 reads a good name because it speaks more to this idea of the men uh, and women finding themselves being charged with certain things and why it's very important for them to maintain their dignity especially and their integrity if they're going to be understood in these roles. And so when we hear uh, Captain Cesario talk about why he why he did make sure that his name was clean before the people, we see this wisdom in the second Proverbs, the 22nd proverb a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than gold and silver or silver and gold is how it's written in this particular verse and so um that's that lets us know how important again that goes back to me talking about representation performance and presentation your name is an important thing and that is because what we have here is the Most High has representatives here. Again, we're, n we're not creating anything new. We're maintaining what is already there. But if we're maintaining it in this filthy vessel that people can scoff at and that people can mock and that people can judge because our behavior is contrary to all that we're trying to, to give out, then this is, this is not going to work at all. This is the same exact proverb space where we get um, the sixth verse in 22nd, chapter says to train up a child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. Now we know when it's time to go there to talk about um, why it's important to instill in our children from the beginnings these beginnings and to understand that these these foundational points are important because that's, they're going to inform his his other decisions and the other things that go on around them. It tells us later that even a child knows that uh, whether he is good or by, by his fruit you will know whether someone is bad or good and so uh, when we look at, again, just to bring it full circle, when we look at the limitations of authority, it's in knowing that the authority is not given by the people, although it is the people that enforce it, the people are pushing, the people are allowing. But the fact is when, when righteousness is being done, we're talking about the righteousness of the rulers, that can only be endowed by the creator. When Tafara was, was speaking about women speaking and being uh, silenced and the like, there's, there's a lot of pushback with the idea of women cannot speak. Women cannot do these, 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 um, these righteous acts or, or convey the will of the creator. But that means that there's a, a part of the doctrine or a part of the thinking that believes that the truth belongs to the men and forgetting that it belongs to the creator. 
So if the woman is saying something that the creator has said, it's not her authority. There's no fear that she's usurping some masculine authority. She's saying what the most high has said. This is the most high's authority. We forget whose people we are. So, yes, it's important to understand order. Yes, it's important to to understand our limitations, the limitations of our, of our vessel, the limitations of, of our mortality in the face of the true and living power. So um, although I want to build on all of these other amazing points that I've heard um, on the panel, I will yield for now so that we can hear from the audience. All right, all right, all right. Thank you for that. That was the first kiss of Mayana. For those who just joined us, we move. We are 930 already, y'all. Y'all already know it's, it's a moon. It's bedtime. I'm going to try to hold out, though. I'm going to try to hold out. When the righteous rule, accusations, authority, and accountability, we're going to check on Brother Sal. We've been rather quiet. Check on the phone lines. If you have something to say, feel free to press 1 at this time. Our Brother Sal, are you there? All right, we want to the phone lines, man. We want to get that number. It's 319-527-6239. If you just joined in, today's show is entitled, When the Righteous Rules, Accusations, Authority, and Accountability. Uh, once again, just dial that number, 319-527-6239. You can call on your phone, call on your Skype. Just press number 1. Uh, at this time, I don't see anybody pressing number 1. They're listening. But I'll let you know. Thank you so much for that, Brother Sal. We're at the 930 hour. We're going to boogie on down to 10 o'clock probably wind down a little bit. So we, b- before we do, we're going to go to accountability. We're going to touch on accountability. I have a question now, because so we've been kind of touching going on this point. But when we have a charge, that's lovely, our sister Tafada brought up, and you're listening and you're looking for someone to hear the case, and you go to different places and no one wants to hear the case, how do you hold someone accountable? Do you just leave it, as we say, to time and the most high? What does the individual do at that time? You call the person's name, you levy a charge, you appeal to the people to hear you, and no one hears you. What do you do from there? Brother Tuzaria. I think um, um, I'll give two answers from my organization perspective. Um, um, Anyone could come to us for counsel or to be heard. Um, the scriptures say, of course, you go to him and him alone. If you can't work it out, then you go to two or three. And if you can't work it out then, then you go before the people. So my school does that. Now, let's say if it's a situation that's outside of that. The person that, let's say um, someone accuses somebody. If the person doesn't answer the charge, you're kind of leaving it. it. Like, that's dangerous. And, again, that's what I learned. Like, if I would if I would have never said nothing, then I could go down as this woman beater, you know, child molester, whatever the the thing was that said about me, because I've never actually listened to the whole thing. I just answered the charges. And so if you don't answer that, you want the people to make a decision. So they never hear you say, I didn't do this, I did do this, this was the reason why I did this, this was the reason why I didn't do this. And so you kind of wrong by default. It's almost like if you get charged, if you got to go to a court, which we're talking about judgment here, so if you had a case and you had to go to court, if you don't show up to court, you're guilty just because you didn't show up, whether you were not guilty or not. And so what we have to do, if you take the sister's issue, uh, Tapora, if you take her, if I say your name wrong, I'm, I apologize. If you take the sister's issue, she comes before whomever she came to. They should have reached out to whoever the issue was against, and it should have been handled. If they did reach out and that person didn't want to respond, then that sister is glorified in the eyes of the Most High and man, which is the most important thing. The most important thing, number one, is to be glorified or right in front of the Most High, um, which could be an Achilles heel because I know I suffer from that. I don't really don't care what people say about me if I'm right in the eyes of the Most High. But that's where you want to be right first. And then everything else could come after that, because even after you're right in the eyes of the Most High and, and you can deny it, doesn't necessarily mean that the people are going to believe you, but at least you did your part. That's a part of being accountable. Accountable is owning up to your role. We are, like, there's times where we can't be perfect, so we're going to make mistakes. Everybody want to act like they're super righteous and they can't do no wrong or something like that, but you can give wrong advice, you can take wrong advice, you can make wrong decisions. 
and you actually show more growth by admitting that you didn't that you did that, and then by stepping away from that, which is one of the things that I said. I hate to talk about myself, but I'm a living experience of accountability, being charged with some X Y Z, and when, even when I did my show, I had apologized to my first wife because I felt like I shouldn't have put her in that position. That's accountability. And, you know, that I think that helps you grow as a leader if you're going to be responsible. If you're going to be responsible for anything that you did, if you're going to give counsel to somebody else, how are you going to give counsel to somebody else when you can't accept your own that you give? That would be called a hypocrite. And if there's a hypocrite, we have to be man and woman enough to spot that out. Otherwise, like imagine if I give an example. When Eddie Long was molesting them boys, that church stood by Eddie Long. Nobody cared about that boy. Nobody cared about anything. So not only did the leader not have to be accountable, the people didn't hold him to any accountability, and they let him continue to teach and be this so-called man of God. So now how are we as Israelites going to do the exact same thing that they're doing? We're no better than them. So we're no different than Christians. So sometimes you might, sometimes when I speak, you might hear me say, oh, these Israelites, they're Christians. Because you look and you act just like them. I say it all the time. If, if a leader, and, and we're saying leaders, but really if we're not going to have respect to a person, whether this person is a leader or whether this person is just somebody that just came into the truth, the same judgment got to be had from the rich down to the poor. That's what James 2 and 2 said. If you have respect to the one with the gold ring and not the one with the vile raiment. So we got to be careful that we're not just leaving this. I know the subject, of course, is leadership. But the least to the greatest has to be held to the same accountability. And if uh, we're not going to do that, we're going to fail. So there has to be a platform. Now, some people may not want to call my school. They may, you know, they want to hear things that have been said and uh, what's said to them, X, Y, Z. But my number is public. I give my number all the time. Um, Anybody could call me for counsel. Anybody that has gotten counsel from me, you can ask them whether I gave righteous counsel or wicked wicked counsel. And I never tell them what to do. What I tell them is what the scriptures say, this is my advice. If you choose to do it, that's on you. Um, The scriptures do say if you seek counsel, repent not from the counsel. But you got to, I don't know, there has to be a place that's levied. And, again, my school is is one. um, And we're willing to answer, I think it was Mariana uh, had brought up an excellent point about you can't congregate with other organizations and stuff like that. I'm one that don't, I don't do none of that. I don't, um, you ask any of the organizations out there, I'll talk to all of them from a GMS all the way to IUIC. Even when I went to Israel, I spoke, I sat with the people in Demona. So I've sat, I've sat with everybody and congregated with them, communicated with them and said, okay, how can we build from here? What can we do? X, Y, Z. Now, what they decide to do with that, I can't control. But you have to be willing to at least do that. That's accountable if we're going to be of the most high. So nobody can say for me that I didn't reach out to them. I won't reach out to them. I'm not approachable. That's how you become accountable on all levels. I yield. All right. Now, this is this is a good one, y'all. We, we're doing it up for the season return. Thank you. That was the voice of Brother Cesare. And again, um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to call the number, 319-527-6239. We're going to go to Elder Shael and his thoughts, and we're getting ready to wind down in a little bit. So we're going to go to your thoughts on accountability. Feel free to chime in at this time. Okay, can I, I can be heard. Can Not in clear. Okay. Uh, I definitely can speak from experience myself. Um, it was like about... Fifteen years ago, uh, one of my uh, ministers, um, this young lady came to the assembly, and next thing I know, he said, the Most High said, uh, that's his wife. So I told him, the Most High ain't telling no mess like that. So a month later, the young lady showed back up uh, um, on Shabbat, and she stood up in front of everybody and said, you know what, uh, Mr. So-and-so was at my house last night walking around butt bone naked. And so... He jump up, tell her to shut up, tell her to shut up. I said, no, nah, I let her speak. So she got to speaking. Um, he got escorted 
out the front door. It wasn't pretty, but he did hit the front door. And so nowadays he's like a renegade because I give him instruction. The instruction is about righteousness. Any issue with your flesh, we could have talked about it. We could have went out based on coffee. So this is a period of time, this young man, I knew. So we have been building a long time. But for him to lie on the most high word, to that's his wife, and to be standing before the people and did not confess, he did not want to be held accountable for what is action. I could not allow him to continue to teach in the assembly. So I want to give a scripture also. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, and verse 15. For Yohewahi, that Eleheka, walk in the midst of that camp to deliver thee and to give up thy enemies before thee. Therefore, should thy camp be Kodesh, that he see no unseemly thing in thee and turn away from thee. The nation must come together. That's one body. One body. And that word camp, mechanica. The word for a camp. So I yield. Thank you so much for that. That story was interesting, but what what I what I took from it is that and it's the truth that some people are not willing to be held accountable. Um and in that case, um, you know, you have to no longer allow them to be in the position that they're in and then let the people know, okay, this is what it is. You know, a lot of times we can go from place to place, and because we have the opportunity and the person before doesn't know where we're coming from, then they don't know who you are. And so you can recreate yourself as many times as you go to new locations. And this also is part of the problem, and then you don't know until somebody gets you know, injured or hurt by the individual, and they start digging and realizing that they've done this before. So there's no record, so to say, um, of this person's behavior, and that's also uh, contributing to some of the issues that we're experiencing. So definitely, I would agree with that. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Brother Beloved Daoud on his thoughts about accountability. Uh, feel free to share at this time. Not sure if he's there. Beloved Daoud, are you there? So, so we gonna come yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. I'm here. Sorry about that. Uh, can everybody hear me? Good. And yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we have. To, I think the standard on the leadership has been set so low. Everybody feel like they can walk through that door. See, but it, it can't be a. Um, oh, yeah, that, that door is impossible for everybody to go in when it's literally saying in the scriptures. Nah, we have to take charge and go out in that door. If he said you have to walk exactly as I did, then that would literally put you in a leadership position. The disciples followed him. But during, they, during them following him, they was example that just like him. So even they was a great light, and they led the people also back to the great master who he told us to lead them back to. If we continue to think in this position right here, all them brothers made mistakes. Show me that in the first beginning of their life. But see, that's just as a babe. When you begin to start, when you first start walking, you stumble. But once you know what what to do and how to walk, you don't stumble that much. You look goofy. That's what you do. We keep breaking the laws, statutes and commandments, we look goofy. So when we keep teaching these children the same thing, that it's okay, yeah, we all make mistakes. No, 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 no. I ain't going to take the position. I ain't going to take that position. I ain't going there. I ain't going to step in those hands. But you can still take advice from me. See, if we're not able to step there and actually experience that, come out of that and able to give them the, the, what their experience from their experience, then you're not apt to teach that. Seriously. So if we keep putting this low standard on the, the leadership, you're going to find these 
low state, you're going to find these brothers who walk in and pimp the people and do exactly what they're doing right now because that, that door has been made so short, everybody can walk through it because we are scared to take it. We're scared to t- take it. Have, a, have the understanding. Know what you're supposed to be doing. See, we got to exceed. We got to exceed. We got to exceed the way they're thinking. See, we, we read scriptures like, um, ye, are, ye are gods or ye are mighty ones. But we still think that that means strong. No, might exceed strong. My woman's strong. Man got to be mighty. No complaining. Take, take care. Guard your people. Go get it. That's what we're talking about. The scriptures is real. Every, you got to make it believable, though. They just words until we make it believable. So who going to take the position? I'm tired of folks denying the position and saying, nah, we ain't going to do it. So as long as we not doing it, guess what? The wolves going to keep eating the sheep. And we still going to keep giving counsel. We need a new approach. That's exactly what's happening. We better link up. That's all I'm talking about, link up. Me and got to leak up, and we got to take, and it got to be a hierarchy, and it got to be some control, and it got to be some law and order. It got to be a hand, but it has to be a physical thing set. Men cannot deny their position in the world. Stand up, get in your office, and become that. You are. You are that. If any man want to take that office, just let him learn and let him get it exactly from who giving us the position. We need more good examples. We done had a lot of bad ones. And that's why that's how you see. That's what you see out here. That's what you see out here. And nobody wanna take the accountability. I will though. So I'm gonna do my part to try to clean it up too. And I'm speaking from a personal experience. Yeah. Cause that's who need the help. Refresh. We definitely out here trying to get the um yeah. That's what we're talking about. Well, well. All right, y'all. <laughs> the wolves are gonna keep eating the sheep. That's what we're experiencing at this point. That that's that you know, you guys sit on those words. Those are those let that one, you know, settle in. Let it settle in. Thank you so much for that. That was the voice of beloved that old. Um, we're gonna touch on uh go to sister mine and sister to father on this accountability and then the audience has this is unusual everyone for debate talk for you the relationship challenge you know usually the audience has a lot to say so this is unusual but we're going to take it as it is and, and take it as maybe they're just listening and taking it in you know which is also a good thing and so we're going to go to um as soon as i said that sal says we got a call <laughs> Take well, the call. I called y'all out of y'all sleep or something. I was like, yeah, now we're going to go to. So we're gonna, let's hear from the caller before we go to Sister Mayana. Um, See, now we got two callers. Y'all waited to the ninth inning. Y'all did not <laughs> trying to have Amuna take her night sleep. Um, we're going to go to the callers at this point, and then we're going to come back to Sister Tafar, Sister Mayana, and then hear some calls and thoughts from the men. We're going to let we're gonna let the men close out. So, uh, Brother Sal, the mic is yours. Right, so we go into the phone lines. Uh, let's go to six seven eight nine six four. Your lives. Um, yes. Um, uh, good evening. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted to, of course, um, give respect to the um, panel, the panel representatives um, that were speaking. Uh, all the brothers uh, made very valid point. I'm so happy that um, all of you have decided to touch this um, subject, especially on the eve of, and I know the the dates differ everywhere, but on the eve of Yom Kippur, where um, we're addressing uh, facing ourselves, um, accountability and repentance. Um, I've been, uh, I guess, a lone lone ranger because of these things, because of the lack of protection and covering. And um, I learned recently, as I'm in a babe in Hebrew language, <laughs> or maybe a zygote, that Kippur means, and we have to cover one another in, in justice, righteous justice. Excuse me, that's probably redundant, but righteousness and justice of the law. So, um, I, you know, so many people have witnessed uh, the the buffoonery 
um, and the lack of order that has transpired within the recent years um, that our our faith and our community and the various camps have been on social media. And um, my heart um, went out to the children that I'm sure were affected by it. Um, we don't, oftentimes we don't think that um, with all the chaos and the lack of leadership and the lack of accountability, how the children or the um, the relatives, the loved ones of those uh, connected, I want to say uh, the person who's been victimized, um, how they're affected. And it's interesting, um, one of the brothers mentioned um, the now deceased uh, Bishop Eddie Long uh, in that whole case. Um, and I, I live a few miles from, from that congregation, and I, I did witness the dysfunction that um, – we as so-called black people continue to perpetuate not only in our own families, not only in our own living rooms, not only in our, you know, communities, but in, in the spiritual circles as well. I, I witnessed it. Um, I'm talking going to the grocery store and someone having a simple conversation and in the midst of the, of the trial, a cashier who's actually a member protected the pastor in the midst of it without any um, any just evidence or or basis. So um, I pray that um, those who are willing to take the burden, to take the charge of being judges and counselors, um, being a part of a uh, a Knesset. Um, a real Knesset uh, of various leaders from various congregations. Um, I hope that they do step up, um, both male and female, to um, ensure that um, our nation, um, you know, be be uh, just be just and righteous, and that uh, we don't have to uh, we don't have to be uh, made a mockery of, you know, that that we are we have uh, some fear or remorse against sin, against error, against filth, against uh, injustice and, and, and crime, you know, that we, we have some kind of fear because we know that, that our elders uh, will not let us, any, anybody get away with, with uh, any, you know, <laughs> I'm speechless at this point, but just not, not let anyone get away with, with, um, Injustice against others. So uh, I just want to say that. Thank you. Thank you for that caller. Thank you for calling in. I didn't catch your name. Would you like to share your name? Or um, my name is Katia K A T H I A. Thank you so much, Katia, for calling in, for listening in, and letting your voice be heard. As you said, you know the wheels are turning. How you know people can collectively. Uh, let's say put pressure on Even if you're not a part of the same congregation But be committed to Not allowing people to rest easy Knowing that there Is stuff floating around And information and questions about behavior um, There's definitely something that we can do not, not, You know um, We just have to come together, put our heads together And find out what's the most effective way To do that, so thank you again for calling in We're going to go to the next Thanks. Caller at this time Next caller uh, Brother Sal, the mic is yours. All right, so that number once again is 319 527. But uh, press number one, if you need to the show, you got to press number one. Sean, that is 02 919 599. Hello, Shalom. Can, uh, can everyone hear me? Can. Uh, shalom, everyone. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, Brother Tamil, uh from the House of Wisdom. Um, I'm already Shail. Um, I just wanted to um, speak on uh, commitment, which I think um, goes hand in hand with uh, the three A's, <laughs> emergency, <laughs> that we have been uh, touch- touching on today. Um, um, the definition for commitment, the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or uh, activity 
is synonyms or uh, dedication, devotion, loyalty, faithfulness. Um, you know, um, I feel like um, commitment is a big part. You know what I'm saying? A huge part um, as far as leadership. You know what I'm saying? Because if you if you know that you know if a leader knows that uh, this brother or sister is committed to Yah, you know what I'm saying? Is committed to the work of Yah. You know what I'm saying? Um, there is less risk or 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 there's less worry that he has the uh, that's on his mind or heart. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, I'd like to go to uh, if y'all don't mind, I'd like to go to Numbers chapter 30 verses. Um, verse two, uh, which says, "If a man bow a bow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth." You know, so um, and that goes for even the brothers or sisters that are that are a part of the assembly, let alone the leader. You know what I'm saying? They have to be committed. And you know what I'm saying, hold that brother accountable, you know what I'm saying, and go to the leader and say, hey, this brother or sister, you know what I'm saying, I, I peep this or I peep that about this brother or sister, I will, you know what I'm saying, this should be acknowledged, you know what I'm saying, bring it to the forefront, you know, so, <clears throat> you know, I feel like uh, commitment is, uh, 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 could play a, uh, and does play a big role. I also came from the Christian church, um, and I've seen a lot of people just come in just for the Sunday and go, you know what I'm saying, Monday through Saturday, they write back, you know what I'm saying, um, the person they was before they come on Sunday, you know what I'm saying, that commitment isn't there during the week, you know what I'm saying, but their commitment is there on Sunday, you know what I'm saying, and their commitment is more to, you know what I'm saying, the pastor than it is, you know what I'm saying, the most high or whatever whatever they call it, you know, so... um. If you if you're committed to the Most High, you're already on one accord with with the leader. With the leaders is 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 committed with the Most High. He's on one accord, and the assembly is committed to the Most High. They're at home doing their work, putting that work in. You know what I'm saying? So when they come back next Shabbat, you know what I'm saying? They're ready. You know what I'm saying? They're they're up to par. You know, so um, that's my take on that. <laughs> Thank you so much for the caller, for calling in and letting your thoughts be known and putting a C up in them triple A's because definitely um, commitment is a part of what are some of the signs and the things that we should be looking for. As Sister Tafara asked the question, how do you vet leaders? You know, well, there's some things that we should be looking for. There's some things that we should know about ourselves. There's some understanding that we have to what we may be susceptible for, where our weaknesses may be. If we're not committed, oftentimes we go to leaders who are going to do the work for us. If they looked it up, then we think we don't have to look it up. And so we don't, we're lazy in certain areas, and so we don't want to do it. And as long as they're doing it, and eh, it sounds about right, then, you know, we rock with it. And then we go down the line and realize they were wrong, and then, you know, things fall apart from there. And so there are there are things that we ourselves have to be ultimately committed to the creator and watch for, like, again, by the fruit you shall know them, watch for whether or not th- these signs, these warning signs, wait long enough and watch long enough and observe long enough to be able to determine whether or not this is the direction that we should be going in. So definitely thank you, callers, for calling in. We're going to hear some closing thoughts from Sister Mayana. Sister Tafara, and then we're going to give the closing thoughts to the men, and then we're going to say Lila Tove at the 10 o'clock, 9.59 hour. We're about to go into overtime, so if you're not on the line, you're probably going to get cut off. The number is 319-527-6239. My name is Amuna Yisrael. I don't even think I told you all that. I don't even remember <laughs> saying that today. But anyway, my name is Amuna Yisrael, and I'm the hostess um, for this evening, so I want to thank everybody who has joined us today. So we're going to go to Sister um, Mayana and then Sister Tafara, and then we're going to get closing thoughts. So you can wrap up all of it together and put in your closing thoughts, and it will be nice and lovely. So Sister Tafara, the mic is yours. 